Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are talking about unexpressed resentment. And for some of you all, you need a little brush up on what it means to resent or to carry resentment. Okay, when you attend a church service and you ask for prayer or you listen to a minister and you hear the word resentment come up, breaking the walls of resentment, what they are saying is that there's this bitter indignation at having been treated unfairly. That's the dictionary definition. Spiritually, You are holding negativity, upset within against someone or a group, okay? And that spiritual resentment, the emotions, all of these negative things that are going on within, eventually they affect your health, okay? They also affect your wealth. They affect your marriage. They affect your career goals, your parenting. I mean, this thing with resentment goes deep and we're going to go deep today because some people are carrying disappointment, anger, fear, and it's all mixed up. It's all mixed up and it's keeping them bound. There's the disgust. You see that person who offended you and you're disgusted with them. That person could be a spouse, a relative, an old friend, a co-worker, somebody who abused and used you back in the day and now they're showing up and showing out again. There's sadness that some people have said that they feel And then, of course, there's the shock. There's the surprise. I can't believe I'm feeling this way. What's going on? You see, you don't feel justified. You feel invalidated. The person who you have tried to express your upset doesn't want to hear you. They don't want to validate you. They're not trying to make wrongs right. Resentment shows up when an emotionally disturbing experience takes place. I'm referring to Wikipedia. And when this emotionally disturbing experience shows up, here comes all of the emotions. The anger, the fear, the disappointment, the invalidation. I don't feel like justice has taken place concerning whatever, okay? And some of you all can fill in the blank. Dictionary.com says the feeling of displeasure or indignation at some act, remark, person. For some people, it's been repeated acts over years, over years. The person could never seem to get it right with you. The person could never respond in the way that you wanted them to respond. You may have been that individual that wears your heart on your shoulder, on your sleeve, (laughs) right? And no matter what that person does or says, they have this way of always offending you. But is it really about the person? Because that's where blame comes into play. Is it really about what they did, what they said? Some people will say, well, yeah, because I mean, that's how (laughs) the bitterness started up. The resentment started up. It was because they did this and they did that. They triggered me. You'll hear some people say that. They triggered me. But how long are we going to keep looking at that person? How long are we going to be in the presence of that person who triggers us? How long are we going to keep talking about solutions, but then there's no resolve? Not on our part, not on their part. 
How long are we going to keep pointing the finger? You see, the God that I serve, he exposes myself as well as others on these emotions that we have, such as resentment, these unexpressed feelings. And when he does this sort of thing, this is when we've got to take control. We've got to harness in our energy because our energy is being dispersed into areas that it shouldn't be. And then when our energy is being drained, we are no good for the people around us, for the people who are relying on us. You see, that's why for some of us, we have to have that moment of peace and quiet and reflection and correction and rebuke. Bud Belanich, who's a career mentor, wrote an article called How to Deal with Resentment, a Career Success Killer. But it's interesting because as I read his article, I'm not hearing career, I'm hearing relationship. I'm hearing built up resentment as it relates to relationship, okay? And some of you all, as I read some parts of this article, you're going to connect with relationship, personal relationship, intimate relationship, your marital relationship. He asked this question, have you ever stuffed a feeling just to keep things okay in your relationship? Now for those who suffer with this, uh, personality disorder called narcissism, they're going to quickly say no. No, not me. I don't believe. I don't think I've ever done that. But the truth of it is, is that <laughs> most of us, all of us at some point in our lives have stuffed a feeling, a negative feeling, something that someone said or did way down deep. And we thought it's okay because I didn't argue that day. I didn't confront that day. I'm good. But are you really? Resentment is a secondary emotion generated by unexpressed feelings. Hence the title, unexpressed resentment. These are individuals who simply don't want to express their emotions because I don't want to hear her mouth, says the husband. I don't want to deal with the silent treatment, says the wife. So I'm not going to share how I feel about what he just said, about what he just did. So we've got some people who've been in relationships in the double digits. And what they've learned to do is deny, ignore, push down their feelings. And we can see physically that they've done this sort of thing. Even if they say, no, I don't do that. No, we can see it because we look at the weight that you've gained over the years. We look at the expression on your face when your wife or your husband comes around. That's why the adulteress, she can slip right on in. The prostitute. The woman who's just fond of you or the man who is obsessed with you because they can read your body language and see that you're not happy at home. Some folks don't mind showing their discontent because they think that, well, this gives me a license to go out here and be comforted by another woman or by another man. And I'm telling you, as sure as I'm standing here, that God doesn't approve. And that's why many people reap what they have sown over the years, cheating and creeping, as well as denying and ignoring and pushing down feelings concerning one's partner. You're not being honest. You resent your partner. It went from I'm just upset to now I don't want to pull the car up into the driveway. I want to keep driving. I don't want to go home. You think we haven't all experienced some of these emotions, even believers? Absolutely. It's not a welcoming experience for these types of emotions in a church setting. 
especially when you know that there are those women and those men who would come after your man or your woman. You're not going to talk about certain topics. But this is why a channel like this exists, because no, you're not going to get on Facebook or some other social media site and talk about how I've been denying and ignoring and portioning down my feelings concerning my wife of 20, 30, 40 plus years. I've been denying, ignoring, or pushing down feelings concerning this boyfriend or girlfriend of 5, 10, 15 plus years. You're not going to do that because people are watching. People are sitting back and waiting for you to mess up, especially if that man is fine or that woman is a dime. They're just not going to be fair those so-called friends, what you don't take care of, somebody else will. So this is, once again, why we got to talk about these things, get them up off of our chest so that we can move on and have quality connections, relationships, friendships, what have you. So you have been holding on to these unexpressed feelings that are growing into resentment or have already gotten there. What are we going to do about this sort of thing? Because it's energy draining. And at times you don't behave in the way that you should in your other connections, relationships. And like I said, other areas of your life suffer as a result. So you want to express your emotions in a healthy way. Not yelling, not being one of those petty folks that like to dig at your partner a bit through some negative words. You don't want to be that one that's walking past that individual with your nose up in the air. You don't want to be the individual that is ignoring your partner for days and weeks on end. If you do want to do this sort of thing, you know sooner or later there's going to be a war of sorts in your household. So what we do is we focus in on ourselves. We need to do some exercise, if you will. Yeah, some folks, they talk about how I need to exercise. I need to lose weight. No, this is the time that you need to start doing it. Soon after you finish listening to this audio, you need to start looking at some breathing exercises. We're not jumping into this situation of getting our minds and our bodies and our spirits right by doing something crazy like staying on a treadmill for hours on end. Some people don't even recognize recommend that because of the pains that some folks encounter taking that pounding on their back and their legs and so forth. So, you know, you want to start with the stretching and the breathing exercises, the types of things that you can do. And there's YouTube videos for people who they don't need equipment to exercise. They need to work that body in such a way where they're not going to cause all sorts of injuries, right? A simple walk, okay? Getting up out of the chair, off the couch, walking will be able to stimulate the body as well as the mind, okay? Some folks have asked me, how is it that all these years you managed to keep a body that looks like back when you were in high school? Because I did a whole lot of walking, a whole lot of walking. I only got a car what a couple almost a couple years ago yes all that time walking here there and everywhere every state that I lived in I walked okay now what is this walking going to do you're going to release some of those pent-up emotions because see I'm not zeroing in while I'm walking on what just took place at home I'm not zeroing in on what just took place at work I walked outside of the workplace, even if it was around the building or across the parking lot. I don't want to be in a setting that is upsetting me. I want to free myself a bit because I know at some point I got to go back into the setting, but at least I have harnessed my energy and it's not out there sticking on the walls and on the desk and showing up on my face so that everybody can see that, oh, that man got to her. That woman got to her. Oh, no, not today. <laughs> not today. So you're going for that walk, right? 
and you're exercising. And another thing I tend to do every now and again is I fast. I will deny myself a meal every now and again because I want my focus to be not on my belly, but I want my focus or on the tiredness that sometimes food brings, but I want my focus to be on the plan, the solution. How might I confront this individual? Because sometimes you got to confront some folks. Get my book, Know Your Enemy, The Christian's Critic. I talk about the demonic that's in some of these individuals and how to deal with that, you see. Because some folks, they're troubled by all sorts of demons and they have no intention of being free from those demons. They're not looking up any deliverance ministries. But for some of you all, that's what you need when you got demons plaguing your mind, voices in your head. Some of you others, you just might need to be sitting down with a counselor or a doctor even. You might have to be prescribed some medicine for a time. I'm not talking about for the rest of your life, but for a time to raise up some chemicals that are imbalanced within the mind, you see. One of the things that you can do is be mindful of those thoughts and realize your thoughts create all your feelings, according to the article. This approach removes all blame and instead says, I am responsible for all I feel. I am feeling this because I thought that. You see, sometimes we misconstrue what our partners and our co-workers, the boss and children have said to us and then we're carrying this weight rather than asking them to clarify or am I receiving what you said in a correct way let me run this by you and then they say oh no no that's not what I meant oh okay you see let's get some understanding so you change your thinking and therefore, when you change your thinking, you change how you feel. The article says the key here is you realize that your thoughts about what someone said or did are the true cause of what you feel inside. Your feelings are not caused by what they actually did. So you might want to post a note to remind yourself. No one can make you feel anything, right? All you feel comes from what you think. I'm going to harness in my energy. You're not going to make me feel this way or that way. Even though the, the demonic wins all the time by making us think that so-and-so put this feeling on me. Was it really? Sometimes people do manufacture certain thoughts, certain emotions within us. We know this having studied psychology and advertising. But I'm responsible as to how long I'm going to feel a certain way about whatever I saw or whatever I heard. Bringing healing to your relationship does matter. Going back to the article, begin this conversation with a humble apology. Some folks, the reason why resentment is building up within you is because you are that type of person that you don't apologize. You're not aware of your feelings and you don't do anything to change your feelings. For those who are aware, now, for those who are unaware, you don't know what to change because, well, simply put, you don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling right now. That's why some people will say, I feel some kind of way. They can't express it. When you own your mistakes and make a commitment to be open and compassionate with those you love, work with, walls can come tumbling down. So if you don't know how you're feeling, and you're not aware that you anger someone, maybe it's safe to simply ask the question, did I do something to offend you? Because sometimes people, they will show us better than they can tell us how we've upset them. Now, if you don't have any intention on making wrongs right, you don't need to have that dialogue then with anyone. You can continue to carry the resentment, the resentment on them love handles, the resentment in that stomach that continues to grow every year. You can continue to have the resentment that is in that mind. That mind that every now and again forgets. That mind that doesn't logically analyze, doesn't reason well. You see how your body starts to break down because of the things 
that one carries or that one allows others to put upon him or her. Sometimes it's just being in the presence of someone who should have long been out of your life. There is no healing with some folks as long as they continue to dispense negativity on you. So the divorce should have happened a long time ago. You wanted to remain in the relationship because there was some benefit. Let's just be honest. The woman was bringing money to the table or the man was bringing some opportunity to you and you benefited. But then after a while, those things are no longer beneficial, right? Going back to the article, if you are willing to work with someone who you know secretly you've been resenting, You've been real bitter, real foul, real negative, hurting their feelings every chance you get, but then saying, I'm just joking. You can work on being that one that has the healthy acknowledgement and expression of emotions. This can include you saying how you feel and you owning your reactions and thoughts that generated how you feel. You can even say things like, I need a few minutes to shift my thinking. I'm caught up in my reactive mind, right? Ready to go in on somebody. But no, no, I'm working right now on letting that go. I have a big charge of emotions and I need to go out for a walk. I don't want to disrespect you, wife. I don't want to upset you, husband. I got to walk. Clear my head a bit. And then can we come back and talk about this? Or maybe it's better that we just text right now because I can't deal with the yelling. I'm getting older now. My ears start to hurt. <laughs> you see, the important thing to avoid is blaming. Remembering you are the sole creator of what you feel inside. When someone is really bugging you, acknowledge that bugging is caused by your thoughts, not by them. Now this, for me, I had to wrap my head around this a little bit. I get it to a certain extent, right? When someone is bugging you, I have a choice how I'm going to respond to that bugging, okay? But when you know somebody is intentionally doing some things to trigger you, this is where you've got to establish the boundaries. This is where you got to stand up for yourself, confront the individual. And you don't have to do it in a disrespectful way, right? Instead, you let the person know, right now, I don't like what is occurring, are you intentionally trying to hurt me? Are you saying these things to get a rise out of me? If that is what your intention is, you can have that what you're doing to yourself. Have that upset, bitterness, whatever is going on that you're doing to try to pay me back. You can do all that by yourself. I'm not feeding into it, you see. Sometimes you got to let that enemy of a person know that you're aware of what they're trying to do. And then you walk away with your head held high and you got Jesus on your back, you see. Some folks, the reason why resentment and bitterness gets to them so quickly is because they don't have an acknowledgement of the spirit that is within. They know about mine. They went, got the necessary education right? Got the skills and what have you for the mind. They even exercise. Some individuals are living the healthy life and they're eating accordingly, right? Portion control, watching calories, or they're just paying closer attention to the things that they can do to build their body up, right? But when it comes to spirit, they neglect that. They don't have an understanding as to the connection between creator and human being. They believe that they can do everything in their own strength. And this is why they look the way they do. This is why they act the way they do. This is why they go through like they go through when it comes to relationships. One is gone. Here comes another. That one's gone. Moving on to the next one and so on and so forth. That spirit is being denied. That spirit is being ignored. That spirit is is slowly but surely being destroyed. And that's what the enemy wants. 
Blocked emotions, going back to the article, blocked emotions can be very destructive to your health and well-being. Okay? Once again, reiterating that point. They also can have a very negative effect on your sense of self and your connection to others. So if you want to live your life to the fullest, you don't ignore your spirit. You don't ignore your body. You don't build these walls of resentment around you and call yourself protecting yourself. Because walls of resentment are not protecting you. They are designed to implode upon you. This wall of resentment not only blocks you, but it blocks the flow outward. This constrictive flow is particularly noticeable because it closes your heart to giving and receiving love. That is the most powerful point of this message. When I build walls of resentment around me as a result of what someone has said or did to offend me, what I do is I block off the opportunity for me to give love, to receive love, to exemplify the love of God. And that is why when some people get in your presence, they don't feel the love. They may even say, I remember there was a time where I felt some love from you. I don't feel that any longer. I've learned over the years that there are those people who, yes, you do establish your boundaries. Boundaries are different from walls of resentment. Boundaries are, yes, I'm open to listening to what you have to say. However, I'll also have to protect my environment, my emotions, my children, or what have you. So I heard you, but I am not receiving you or receiving what you said. Okay. This doesn't mean that I'm going to go out here and I'm going to exact revenge on you and be negative and do all these devilish things to you. What this means is simply put, I am allowing myself to be safe away from the dramas and the traumas. Because some people, that's all they're going to bring to you, right? Because they got their share of resentment. But walls of resentment are the types of things that it's not about safety. It is about somebody holding ill feelings toward others. And those ill feelings are turning into something destructive that eventually kills. Kills them emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. And eventually six feet deep in their graves they go. So this is a wake up call for some of you all. And I hope that you will keep in mind that God, he wants you to have that type of time with him where you are no longer denying or ignoring your feelings. He wants to break the walls of resentment down. He wants you to express your emotions to him in a journal, to your counselor. He wants you to be on that path toward healing. He wants you to take care of your body. He wants you to uplift your spirit. And you can't do this sort of thing without the one who created love. In order to receive and give love in a healthy, functional way, You've got to connect to the one who created you. So you spend the time quiet, away from people, places, and things. You study and show that self-approved unto God. You read his holy word filled with wisdom. You allow yourself to be a human being. That has emotions. Some folks have been told for far too long that it's not okay and all right to express how you truly feel. 
that you're not a man or you're not a woman when you sit there and cry or when you sit there and you share how you truly feel about someone. You're weak and you're this and that. I'm here to tell you, you are strong. You are strong when you express how you truly feel about your wife, about your husband, about your children. You're strong when you say that you appreciate and you love and you want a better life with someone. You are strong when you say that you want to be a better man, a better woman, and you need God. And you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You are better than those individuals who call you weak. This isn't a gang initiation. This isn't one of those times in your life where you got to prove yourself and you got to go all out and show that you're hard. Most of those people who did all that, look at their lives. They're not happy. The only ones who are truly content are those who have made a conscientious decision to change. May the Lord richly bless you as well as those that you love. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube, Venom Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and we do welcome giving. Thank you in advance for giving to this channel. Once again, blessings to you.